Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to Yumi Radio. This is Yumi Radio, WME db new york i'm dj kelly and i'm just here as a producer for the show christians and sex which is about to begin hosted by keith the entrepreneur or aka dj kte and lady misty uh they're both going to i think they're both going to be joining me soon or it's a, it's a possibility that we may just be joined by uh, DJ KTE because I think that Lady Misty her throat isn't well no it's not the coronavirus <laughs> it's not the virus at all she's just having uh, a, a bit of a sore throat at the moment and we pray and decree and declare that it shan't be the COVID-19 um, however uh, DJ KTE will be joining us very very soon and until they get here i'll be sharing with you uh some information on the topic that they will be discussing they're going to be talking about tonight uh money economics and the church that's the conversation tonight and i'll just start sharing with you some data while we wait for our host to join us and for uh more persons to get on this call is going to be an interesting conversation hi tap thank you so much for joining us welcome to the room welcome welcome to the room the topic tonight is money economics and the church and our website is www.umeradio.com that's the letter u m e radio.com thank you so much for being here uh we're happy to have you so in an, in a in a publication by we forum that's world economic forum um here is a here's an article that they were shared that they shared how religious will the world be in 2050 in 2050 reports of the death of organized religion have been exaggerated According to recent research, the growth of religious populations worldwide uh, is projected to be 23 times larger than the growth of the unreligious between 2010 and 2050. The report changing the report changing religion, changing economies, which draws on a 2015 global study one moment let me take this call or uh dj kt is here hey and, hey, hey i'm yeah, here hello, yeah. hello. <laughs> i yeah. just started sharing the data as yes. we wait for you both to be here so i was just sharing some information information from world economic forum and um, i'll continue so the report changing religion changing economies which draws on a 2015 global study published in Demographic Research and its connected Pew Research Center report has profound implications for the global economy. Today, seven of the, seven of the G8 nations have Christian majority populations, but by 2050, only one of the leading economies is projected to have a majority Christian population, the United States. The other mega economies in 2050 are projected to include a country with a Hindu majority, India, a Muslim majority, Indonesia, and two with exceptionally high levels of religious diversity, China and Japan. As religious, religious diversity and religious populations grow, so does their potential impact, creating new challenges and opportunities for societies, governments, and economies. The impact of religion is on the rise on a global scale. By the middle of this century, the number of people affiliated with a religion is expected to grow by 2.3 billion from 5.8 billion in 2010 to 8.1 billion by 2050. Now let's look at some economies, some of the what the, uh, the economists are saying. Uh, World Economic Forum again, um, shared another report um, where they, and this is what it says, religion plays both negative and positive roles in religion to 
in relation to inclusive growth. On the one hand, religion-related hostilities, prejudices, and biases can lock people out and inhibit inclusive growth. On the other, religious organizations have a tremendous capacity for doing good, with most religious groups being known for their programs to address poverty and or care for the poor. For example, earlier this year, global religious and faith-based leaders convened at the World Bank to call and commit to ending extreme poverty by 2030. Beyond poverty alleviation, research also shows that when freedom of religion or belief, including interfaith and inter intercultural understanding, accompanies the rise of faith, the peace the peaceful conditions necessary for inclusive growth are often strengthened. An economy that excludes kills. With these words, Filipino Cardinal Louis Antonio Tagle, um, who was recently elected head of Caritas International, challenged business leaders in the Philippines to address poverty. Speaking at the 39th Annual Bishop Businessmen's Conference for Human Development, he exhorted them to include the poor in their vision and mission statements in deciding what what goods to produce and services to provide as and as part of their strategic plans. Christian groups and organizations approach inclusive growth in a number of different ways, according to their different theologies. The largest Christian church, the Roman Catholic Church, emphasizes the importance of social justice and alleviating poverty. In fact, a quote from Pope Fra Francis um, at the message a message to the World Economic Forum annual meeting 2014, he said, ask you, I ask you to ensure that humanity is served by wealth and not ruled by it. Um, further down, uh, they stated, this does not mean that the Catholic position is blindly pro-business. It is pro-people and pro-business only to the extent that business can lift people from poverty and despair um, to hope and, and to prosperity and hope. Quoting a fourth century bishop, Pope Francis called the unfettered pursuit of money the dung of the devil, emphasizing that developing countries should not be reduced to providers of raw material and cheap labor for developed countries. The emphasis is on fair social distribution more than individual wealth creation. Another noteworthy um, report uh, that was shared in, in, um, in this was where it, uh, well, let me find it for you. Okay, so the shift of Christianity's center of gravity. I think I'm missing something. Okay, these challenges are occurring as Christian populations are increasingly concentrated in the South where the impact of poverty is more broadly felt. The share of the world's Christians living in Europe is expected to decline substantially um, between 2010 and 2050. Meanwhile, the share of the world's Christians living in sub-Saharan Africa is expected to grow significantly from about 24% of the world's Christians in 2010 to 38% in 2050. The shift of Christianity's center of gravity to Africa means that the African experience will be a major factor in helping to shape the social and economic perspectives of global Christianity. And this process is already underway. There are more members of Anglican churches living in Africa than in England. The president of the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace, which directly addresses issues related to poverty in Cardinal Peter Kodwo Apaya Turkson of Ghana. His council recently published a guide for business, vocation of the business leader. On poverty, it states, development in the field of the bottom of the pyramid in the field of the bottom of the pyramid, products and services such as micro enterprises, micro credit, social enterprises and social investment funds have played an important role in addressing the needs of the poor. These innovations will not only help lift people from extreme poverty, but could spark their own creativity and entrepreneurship and contribute to launching a dynamic of development. They know how to fish, they just can't access the pond, was echoed. Faith-based thinking on poverty stemming from decades of experience in sub-Saharan Africa is rapidly moving beyond just delivering aid or teaching a man to fish. As Doug Seabeck, president, president of Partners Worldwide, a global Christian network aiming to end poverty says, they know how to fish. People at the margins know how to fish. They don't 
um, have access to the pond, they aren't able to engage and participate in the economic systems, markets, relationships, networks of support and collaboration and cooperation, tools and models many of us take for granted. We have focused here on positive faith initiatives, but whether it works for good or or ill, the role of religion and faith is promoting inclusive growth around the world needs, needs to be taken seriously. And that's from weforum.org, World Economic Forum. I thought that was very, very interesting to say the least. Yes, I, I thought so too. I really, some real numbers there. Yes, yes. Yes. So, so the topic is you. money, economics, and the church. Yes, and, and thank you so much for uh, giving us those information. I think it's uh, um, again we thank you guys for hanging us with hanging us uh, hanging with us tonight on Christians and Sex. Um, and if you've been um, listening for the last number of weeks, you notice that we are a data driven show. We believe in bringing data to you guys um, because uh, it's not just about talking. It's how can we look at numbers and if they need to be be increased, they they increase, and if they need to go down. Uh, they need to go down with our help and with our support and with our involvement in, in how we impact the world with our gifts and with our abilities that God has I given don't us. know if it's me, Keith, but your um your 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 in your your connection seems weak. You wanna uh, check that? Yes, I'll check it out for you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all for being here. I know Lady Misty isn't feeling so well today, tonight. She's having, I think she having, she's having a bit of pain in her throat. Not the COVID nineteen, but um, she wasn't feeling so well. So I'm not quite sure if she'll be joining. Okay, so but we wish her so. We, we we're here for you. Oh, hey, there she is. Good night, Lady Misty. <laughs> Are you back, uh, DJ KTE? She's here. Yes. Oh, great. You can call I in, my dear. You can All go right. ahead and connect with us. Does this sound better? Much better. Much better. There you go. Awesome. 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 Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> All right. And Misty, welcome. Glad to have you. Are you muted or are you there? Oh, she won't be able to oh, speak, speak, but she's okay, in the, the she's chat. in the chat. Yeah, oh, got um, you. Understand, understand. we hope you well, get well soon and and yes. keep keep hydrated. <laughs> yeah, we, we send out a prayer for you. <laughs> yes, yes. So she's, she's on meds. meds. Awesome, awesome. Anyway, folks, again, I thank you guys for joining us here in Christian and Sex. Um, the segment here lasts roughly about an hour or so. Um, and tonight, the our title is Money, Economics, and the Church, uh, as you stated, you heard, you heard, um, you heard stated earlier. And mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting topic because, you know, um, many people believe that the churches are all about money, you know, and some kind of take it to the extreme. But, but I think that uh, many churches have made it bad for other churches who are doing the right thing. Um, because when you look at the world and, and how it's going, it, it seems as if the church is all behind the world with certain important things. I think that's, that's very, very, very important to take note of. But I have a question for you, though, Keith. Yes. I'll just stay with you since um, Lady Misty's out. I'll sit in for her tonight. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> I've had a concern for a long time. I haven't gone to many churches. I've been a part of Christian churches. I'm not saying this only happens in the Christian church or in every Christian church. However, as I see it and as I look at it, I often wonder why does it always seem like the poorest people are in church? Hmm. To me, I mean, I could be wrong, but like when I look at social gathering gatherings, it, it just looked to me sometimes like when you look at the mass, like more of the people there are poorer than not. Uh, that's I mean, interesting. That has, been your experience, but that has been my experience. Yeah, and I think I think it, it, but, yeah. I, I think if I think if it is. Or it appears to be. I mean, 
I can see why from from my vantage point. I mean, I grew up in church, and I think that um, for too long they have, they have, they were more heavenly minded um, than earthly good, <laughs> as they would say. You know, I think the, I think the mindset was to just get out of this world rather than impacting this world. You know, how can I get out of this world? How can I? You know, so the songs dictated that. You know, I want to go home, fly away, and these songs and trouble and pain and heartaches. So it could be that they were bearing the poverty for lack of a better, better word. I um, so. Hoping to go soon. Yes. And also bearing it as far as they almost like a badge because you know, the, the way how the way Christ was portrayed to many, many people as if he was poor. But mm -hmm. if you look at it, if you look at Christ's life and the way he lived, he had access. It wasn't about what he had to show off to the world. When he needed, when he needed an horse, a donkey, he sent for it. He needed fish to pay taxes. He sent for it. He was able to. He had the right people in place to to get what he needed. So his access is what I think what keeps people from, in poverty. They have little options and they have little access. And when Christ came, he came and said, "No, there's access here." You know, yeah. and, and whether you, when you, you get that thing through faith by believing and receiving it, but it's there, you know, right. um, when he came. He, and I, because I don't necessarily think it's all religions because based on my own, because I wasn't even surprised when I was reading the data and it was saying um, more of the persons who are Christians were in sub-Saharan Africa. I mean, when you look at what is happening in Africa, the poverty level, the, um, the, 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 the effect of the HIV, the, I mean, you know, so the poverty is very there. Um, but even when you look at developing other developing countries and stuff, I mean, you do have, it's, it's, it's often you go to church and you're sitting in church and you can see the 1% in the church. <laughs> like you can see, yet Africa is very rich in some areas. Exactly, exactly, right? But sometimes I feel as though the way we sometimes view religion marginalizes people let me explain <laughs> i'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings so let me explain when i say that i mean that oftentimes when you listen to the messaging of church right i remember i went to a church and um it was in jamaica and when i went there when i walked in they were having sunday school and the person who was leading, he was talking about, he was connecting agriculture to what God meant when he said you should have dominion over the earth. And just the way he was doing it, it was the first I've ever heard um, someone put it that way to persons break it down so they can connect it and make it literal and practical. Um, other times it's like there's this faith that is preached. I don't speak for all church, but there's this, this faith that is preached that almost leave people in comfort desolation. Mm, okay. In a comfort of desolation, like, like in a bed, a pillow, like I have a, this whole pillow of faith that is rock hard, you know, that gives no comfort, comfort at all. This pillar of faith, this, this pillar of faith that is so hard that when you lie on it, all the burdens that you carry for the entire life is, is like, packaged right there. It's like you go to bed at night and, and you say, oh, God is going to take care of this, but it's just problems in your mind and, and you're so burdened and you're so heavy laden, and but you're having faith. What is faith? Mm. Because I don't think faith means that I shouldn't pursue wealth. I don't think faith means that I shouldn't pursue a, a, a life that is full um, and a life that is rich. I don't think faith means that I should just um, wait and hope that either one, I don't live long enough to bear it too long or a miracle happens and I'm going to be taken care of. There is no such thing. Yeah, but, but what, well, remember now that faith without works is dead. So yes, but do to... you think that the people who are in church are thinking about that? Do, do you think they're really... Do you think, think they're really I think not enough. that really and truly? I think not enough. I think church on a on a on a on a on a whole scale um is not is not pushing that enough. I know their pastors are really passionate about that, 
and they teach it. They try to let you know, to listen, there's activity. They try to bring in stuff in the church as with economic development, whether it's outside folks who can bring that information in there, developing their members, you know, holistically, not just, you know, mm-hmm. biblically, but they're trying to, they try to really uh, empower their, 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 um, their parishioners. But I think too many churches, you know, um, and like I say, it's a numbers game. You know, if you don't, if you only have a certain amount of people doing this, then what effect is the world going to see? So the more of us that that are that are that are um, impacting the world with these things, you you think about technology now, right? Um, and if you think about what has happened with the coronavirus just now, all right, mm-hmm. economics now, and 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 money is a big deal now. It's like of a sudden yeah. now. You can't now, pay the tithe anymore. There's no tithe to pay. It's now it's now making sense. So so now. What 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 has happened is that, you know, the the world is changing, right? And if we don't get ahead of it or get with it, so to speak, we may find ourselves maybe, uh, you know, left behind, wondering what happened. Uh, case in point, um, think about uh, think about how people hear about digital world and digital um, things that are that that's going to affect us, and people just. Almost like scoff at it, like what is that? You know, it's not, it's not, it's not important to my life. And, and, and find comfort right? in saying, "Oh, I yeah. don't know what that is," and remain there. Remain there. I don't get it. Now you think about it. My right now, the schools are thinking about now how are we going to do homeschooling, there colleges, universities, hospitals. I mean, government people are saying, "How can we now make this world?" Make it a little, give us a little more option here that we won't be stuck anymore like this. We won't be so handicapped or feel so, mm-hmm. so, um, so, so uh, o- over- o- overwhelmed, overwhelmed, mm-hmm. and still have a functioning government and a functioning system. Right. So, so now here we are now, and maybe we can expand it a little more because um, I think God has blessed you with a lot of the insight <laughs> um, for, about this world and what you see, what you, what you, uh, in fact, talk about what you've seen. Years ago, and now on what you've seen happening now, to kind of correlate with with with, with what uh, what we experience. Well, I'd like to start here. Um, I'm going to answer what you just asked, and I'm going to share my views on it. I and my views are very unconventional. I'm not the regular host of this show. <laughs> Let me I make it very clear. Just, I just do go, not just go, just go I light not, with me now. So I do not next, speak so for Linda time. Macy. I am just <laughs> holding her seat for tonight. Yeah. Um, I do not represent any religious group or anything. These thoughts that I have are my own. Let me just make that very clear because I know that sometimes when I talk, people get real upset and real hurt. <laughs> so I'm not seeking to hurt anyone's feelings. But to be honest with you, it's the black church that I think that suffers from faithitis is what I'm going to call it, right? Where we sit thinking that there's this faith that's going to generate what we need to meet our needs. When you look at the Catholic church, churches and my experience of them, when you look at the, the Arabs, when you look at those people are wealthy. And what I don't understand is how is it that the church in Africa allows for its soil to be so raped, to allow for its people to be so raped, mm. allow for them to, for us to be so raped of our wealth. You know, um, I remember there was a saying that my, I would hear people say, you know, the, the, they came with religion. When we had land, then we had people who came with religion. They came with their religion and the Bible. And then when they left, we had the Bible and they had the land. When they came, we had the land. Sorry, and they had the Bible. When they left, we had the Bible and they had the land. <laughs> you know, where is the advocacy? When I see how the church come out to, to, to protest against homosexuality and, and stuff, I've never heard them protest against poverty. Have you walked into some of these churches and see the way people, the state of people, mm. the state of the mind of people? It's been so, it's been a burden for me. 
just a burden. And so, yes, you're correct. Um, I have been really looking into it. And ever since 2016, I feel like God has placed a special call on me. And, and, and I mean the God that I know, not necessarily the God that is preached about, but the one I know, the one that I, I have a relationship with. Okay. And he's really just impressed on me like um, to work with people of faith to help them to develop their personal brands and to um, create a, a, a product or a service for themselves. Because this is what I think, right? If in each church, the people are developed and the people are supported and have a support system and they have people who work with them to help them to establish their brands or to, and to develop some kind of product um, to monetize their skill set, then that, I believe, would really start. put a dent in this poverty thing. Even like as they were talking about in the research that I was just sharing with you, um, you know, where they're saying, and I don't like when I hear about that, honestly, because I feel like, what if, okay, so the Bible says you should give one-tenth of your, your, your income for tithing, right? Mm -hmm. who, who, how does the church tithe? It's income, right? It's, it's earning income anyway. What if the church was to say, okay, one-tenth of all our income, we're going to reinvest it in our people. Since you gave us, we're going to reinvest in you. We're going to create the loans here so they don't have to go to the banks, right? We'll give you the loans here, and the only thing you have to pay back is the actual loan. How about that, right? Why can't the church, the church has leaders. Why can't the church leaders come together, put their minds together, identify business people in the church, um, smart people in the church, talented people in the church, and say, okay, let's bring these <laughs> ones together and let's see if we can cultivate um, or create some kind of pro internal project for each church to say, okay, here is a, an innovation church um, project or an entrepreneurial project and, and, and give themselves a target. Every single month, we must launch two brands, two products, two services, two entrepreneurs in this here church every single month and make that a priority and provide the support because money is not how businesses are established. Mm -hmm. Money is only one resource. Where is the value? Where is the net investment of the of the relationships that people build in churches? Mm. So, Where's so the net investment? So when right? You say, when you come to church, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let you finish. Yeah, I, I get all, oh some, yeah, I, I, I see the, I see the passion, <laughs> and I will yes, let you say, I, 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 it's a burden for me. I, I can't stand to see it. But I think I, I like, cannot stand to see. Sometimes when I hear church leaders talk, I'm just like, gosh, can I? Like, I don't even want to hear it. Where's the empowerment? Where is the empowerment? It's like, I feel like they come to church to, to make money, and so they're not even engaged. How, church leaders don't even empower themselves. Church leaders don't even think they need to go a, and maintain their degree, get a degree, and, and get certification. You're leading people. You're leading people. Where are you leading them to? You know, you can't just rely on what you knew last year. 10 years ago, how are you keeping yourself relevant if you're a church leader? Hmm? A church leader, how do you keep yourself relevant? How do you ensure that as the business landscape changes, that you're able to bring the church into new paradigms, new, new, and new business realities? How do you ensure the church is evolving if you are not evolving? So, I am so... so, so um, so, me, so I, 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 lo I love the um, I love the enthusiastic, yeah. um, again passionate, I but, but, but 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 mm -hmm. but I think I think you make some you make a very good point. The thing I I know there are churches that are actually doing this thing, but it's not wonderful. Enough. It's not it's just not enough. It's like we need more of this thing to to permeate our churches. And yes. Again, you have the different factions, the different names, the different. You know, so I think because of the, of the divide, the, the division that's there, um, whether intended or not, but I think it takes away from, 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 from what needs to happen. Now, if you look at the, what's going on now, the causes of this one virus, 
look how almost everyone is almost centered around the same thing. Mm -hmm. You see, it's almost like it's almost like a a natural occurrence where it's like we all have to think this way now. Mm -hmm. So I think using we having this this medium and and I'm happy to that God's allowed me to be a part of this amazing um, um, company with the 24 hour, 24 seven station. Where you and me digital is the only company I've heard. I've not heard say, we're going to have to stop working. All right. Every this, other company I know have sent mm -hmm. people home, have said we can't continue working, have gone empty. I, nothing has changed for me because since 2016, I've worked from home. Yeah. And, and so therefore that's why we are really big on sharing and really we kind of, um, giving these uh these nuggets these information because many people yeah and it's, a, have, and it's a, actually I'm, I'm sorry to keep interrupting you i'm sorry oh yeah it's a good time for the church to act it's a yeah. really really good time because mm -hmm. the transition from physical world to digital world allows for some opportunity you know yes. and i think if they were to decide to act quickly they could really empower some people and I don't know why they sit back and wonder why is it young people aren't coming here? Like I, when I hear that, I'm just like, huh, really? Don't you get it? Like, like I don't even understand it. How can a people be of the a people who who are supposed to know God? Can, how can they be so blind? How can be can, how can how can the church of, or the people of, of the children of the light? But I think the other part in the Bible that says the children of the light is something or other. No, there's the, something about the children of the, the, children of the, the dark. Children of the, uh, uh, wiser than the children of the light. <laughs> yeah, are yeah. wiser because I think what happens is it's like this militant, I am serving God and it's the Bible and nothing. It can't be because the, being, being a part of, of a church is, a, is being a part of a group. It's an organization that you're a part of, right? Knowing God and learning God and, culti and having a relationship with God has nothing to do with church. Personally, that's what I believe. Because I can have a relationship with God without church. Church is about fellowship. It's about building relationships. And relationships are what, um, where possibilities are generated or possibilities are killed, right? Mm -hmm. Relationships is the form the foundation of, 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 of any success that can come. The, 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 your result, the, the, oh God, there's a quote in my head, but it's gone. The, 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 your, your result is based on the quality and quantity of your relationships. That's what I wanted to share. And I'm not just talking and passionate about it, Keith. And I apologize for interrupting. It's just something that I feel like whenever I come on this topic, I feel like, I feel like I'm about to explode. <laughs> I, 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 I fully understand. And you know, when someone has the... Um... Like walk into the churches mm -hmm. and just pull people out and say, come, let's go build your brand. You come. What's your, what's your, what are you good at? And just start doing it. Like, let's just get this thing done. You know? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. something's got to be Something needs to be done. Yeah. I think I'm, I want to... I know says, we're supposed says, to. Have you said something um some some time ago. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. You said something some time ago, and what it was was that, you know, when you felt when you were at your lowest in a point in your life, mm -hmm. um, and what that did for you, did for your psyche, did for your outlook, yeah. and I think um, many people just don't have that awakening yet. They haven't had that crisis mm -hmm. yet. Um, I think this right here, what's happening now? I mean, to, to see New York City where you go to 42nd Street and you can count how many people on, is on the platform, that's pretty scary. You know, yeah. there, there is an awakening, there is a, there is a shifting that's taking place. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there are many theories on it. And I'm who did it and why. that my people but, will get on board before it's too yeah. late because yes. we're always late. When it comes to um, the, the digital world, it's like... Uh, Endless with, opportunity. At, at some point, at some point, it won't be as easy it will be free flowing exactly it, be, it just won't be so all the regulations I, would, would have been in place after a while yeah because they plan to go fully digital by when i think it's 2020 30 
But Some people don't even know what Bitcoin mean. After a while, mm -hmm. we talk about currency exchange. Now you have to, for example, in places like Jamaica or Africa, you have to pay for the US dollar. We're going to be paying for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, and, and hi, Marsha J. Um, we're supposed to be joined tonight by uh, her parents, their ministers. And I think it would be uh, interesting to you know hear their point of views. Um, do you want me to stick around, Keith, or would you like me to leave you guys to have this conversation? Because I, I think I'm so passionate about the topic, I might need to go. <laughs> no, you can stick around. I think it's. I think it's. It needs to be passion. Passion is important. I think. Yeah. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know. Please call me, uh, Marsha J. People don't your... don't do because they're not passionate enough. So, oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect for the topic, she says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very yeah. passionate about. Is twenty in twenty. I didn't. I never ever wanted to work with Christians. Um, I grew up in the church. I um, I, I used to wear a T-shirt to church that says "Rebel." Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I had my thoughts were so different. Um, I, I, I th my thoughts were wild, because I always knew that I could be anything I wanted to be. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Is this Mr. and Mrs. Jared? Yes. Good night. Good, 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 good night. night. Good night. Good night, Mr. And Mrs. Jared. How are you? Good. Thank, you. Thank you. Blessings, oh. blessings, blessings to you both. Yeah. Um, I'll just finish my thought and then I'll, you know, allow the interview to begin. Um, but I didn't want to work with anyone. It's the last you could never. If the moment you walk into the room and say you're a Christian, I was out literally, and I was very open about it. I'd be like, uh, we won't be working together. <laughs> and so I didn't in 2016. Um, hmm, God spoke to me, you know through his own wrath. <laughs> and I remember um, him saying to me, and at the time I didn't accept it or admit it, um, because as far as I'm concerned, of course, that's not God talking to me. I thought I was just crazy. He said, you've made a lot of secular people wealthy. No, I need you to help my people. And I did everything I can to ignore it. I would have people from all over the world contact me. Um, to say certain things to me and I'd just be like, mm, like whatever, you know, and they would just be talking and I'm rolling my eyes the whole time until in 2016 when I, when I don't say I lost my business, I think God took it from me. The moment it hit over a million dollars, it was taken from me. I never saw a dollar of it. And I knew it wasn't by accident because there were too many strange things happening. And then there were so many messages I would have gotten and thing. And so it's the funny thing is since that, since, since that happened, every single client <laughs> I've gotten since either have a theology in a, a, a PhD in theology or something to do with theology. Mm, and here I am. <laughs> so, so we, we, we want to hear, when you hear um awesome um um uh coach Rick Hill, awesome um but we'd like to hear from uh, mr and mrs jared we don't have Absolutely. a lot of time here but just be in a brief way just kind of share with us um your thoughts and speak to our audience and and, and where you are right now and what you're looking uh at uh in the, in, in the near future and how this coronavirus is affecting you guys and the yeah, church you could just tell us who you are first share your full names because we never gave it and the church you represent and then let us know how the whole corona covid 19 is impacting you where you are okay thank you very much You're um it's a pleasure to share with you on this medium and um my name is norma jarrett and I am the pastor of the United Lifeline Deliverance Church in St. Anne's Bay, St. Anne, Jamaica. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, good night to you all. Hi. I am happy to be uh, in your audience tonight. I am Mark Chilean Jarrett, the Bishop of the United Lifeline Deliverance Church of God International. And so we are happy to be with you and we're so happy to have you, you. yes and to <laughs> let you know that the coronavirus uh, virus is really hitting hard in the minds of, of, of our people but we just have to stand firm and encourage everyone to stand still and, and see the salvation of God if mm -hmm. we keep up to our 
you know, what we've been told and do the necessary thing, we believe that God will pull us through it um, sooner than we think. What are the streets, what, what's the church like um, and the turnout from the people? What are some of the concerns that your members have raised, if any? Well, uh, the crowd crowded in the church, uh, like Sunday, we we did not have the uh, amount of members coming out as we normally have. We could have just under 100, but um, we decided that we will only have Sunday morning services, and uh, on Wednesday we will do a short prayer meeting on Wednesday. But uh, we are we are hoping we we are putting together now an online uh, thing where where we can do our Bible studies and do our Bible studies online, and we can stay in connection with our people. Awesome! Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so, um, what do you think, uh, the churches in Jamaica are, are there, is, uh, is there coming together, is there, is there communication on that? Like, um, you find that pastor linking with other pastors, there's some kind of, um, communication going on where those who may not be thinking this way, um, start to think that way. Are you getting those, any of those, um, those, uh. Communications. Yes, quite a number of pastors are are coming together, holding meeting, giving instruction and advice. So uh, we are very much a part of this. We have, mm -hmm. like in Sentence Bay, we have the uh, Sentence Bay Ministers Fraternal, where we are going through a lengthened season, where we have mm -hmm. lengthened service. Now we have to curtail these services because of the advisory from the government that uh, mm -hmm. we should um, cut down and the amount of people that meet. But we, we still keep in touch with each other to make sure that as the church, we are on top of things. We are praying where we are and meeting people where we can and share the good news. May I ask, what are some of the measures you're putting in place to provide support to persons who are now shut in as a result of the inf the virus? Well, we we have a program where we uh, there are persons from our church, deacons and deaconesses that will, and other officers who would go to the homes of the shatim and um, take whatever they might uh, ask for or need and pray with them, um, sharing large supper and, and all that. So we are very much on top of what is going on with our very nice. Okay, okay. We, uh, we, we also ask them to call us if there are any specific needs that they have. Don't be afraid to call the office and they all have the church's number so we can attend to the needs of our members. And of course, last Sunday what we did, we had the public health nurse coming in which was a part, integral part of our Sunday service. And she actually gave a very informative educational talk. And we had questions and answers, and it went live as well. That's wonderful. Sounds good. Sounds like you're doing a really, really good job. So who takes care of the people who takes care of everybody else? <laughs> <laughs> well, we trust that God will take care of his own. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And of course, we have our members there, very caring members. They would call from time to time, Pastor, are you doing well? Is everything okay? You know, we have those calls, parents to call from time to time. We right, have... right. Um, I don't know if you know, but if you don't, then that's okay. But I'm just going to ask, uh, do you know how many of your members are affected economically? Uh, for example, those who may be laid off because of the... The, um, the virus or those who may have to stay home or any of that? Do you, do you, are any of your members affected economically? Well, not as yet. The thing has just started and um, we haven't heard of any layoff or, you know, person not loss going out, loss of job or anything like that. Right. For us. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, okay, so that's that's very good. And are there any preparations just in case? Well, uh, we have made announcement in church that if if the need should arise, yes. you know, they can call on us and we will do whatever we can to assist. That's wonderful. Good job, and and keep up the good work. Is there anything? Um, it, are there any ways that your the diaspora? Because this this station broadcasts uh, in from New York from New York, and we have people who join us from all around the world. Um, what can anyone who's listening do to support um, your church? Do you have like a um, a fund that you you have running now for emergencies, or is there anything anyone can support you with? And if so, how and what would they do? You can share that information if that's the case. Yes, we we have um, a program, a feeding program that we uh, where we feed the uh, people and the street, the unfortunate and. Um, those who can't help themselves, the mentally uh, disturbed and all that. We also have a great program where we, uh, we endeavor each year to raise funds to help our students back into college and university. And um, as a matter of fact, in, uh, and, and, and um, Lab Labor Day, we, um, just around that time, we have a concert where we, we uh, try to get funds, or raise funds to help the young people back in school in September. And we have been doing pretty well over the years, uh, but we, we think that we need to do more. And so we are re reaching out our hands to those who right. are willing to assist. Okay, great. If they want okay. to assist you, go ahead. Go ahead, Mrs. Jack. Okay. In relation to um, coronavirus, mm -hmm. we we would highly appreciate any assistance we can get because um, we anticipate that there might be some persons who, right. um, from what is happening in our environment, who might lose their job or they would maybe close down for some time. And there are the shuttings that we have. And they are of... Um, they are of much um, importance at this time because we have to keep checking to see how they are doing and to help to provide um, and meet their social needs as well. So there is a number if there's anyone who would want to assist in, you know, helping us as a, as a church body, the number to call is 972-9229 between the hours of 1030 and 4 p.m. And our email is unitedlifelinehq at gmail.com. Could you please repeat that for me and give the area code when you do? The number to call is 9876-972-9229. And the email address, pardon me? Yes, go ahead. And the email address is unitedlifelinehq at gmail.com. And that's located. You. You're welcome. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. They, is there anything? Go ahead. Sorry, they can call from Monday to Friday. The office is closed on weekends. Do you have any online um, portal, payment, uh, portal where they can go to donate? We have not yet... Um, Okay. establish that that's okay okay no problem we shared it thank you so much for sharing is there anything else you'd like to share well we just okay just want to thank you so much for making us a part of um of this program and we want to thank um all our listeners for tuning in and um we just want to say how much we appreciate and in the in the in the um in the term for um, keeping well in, mm -hmm. in this time coronavirus, we want everyone to be safe and to take care and to stick to the precautionary measures that has been put in place by the the public health department and um, 
from the government who has been issuing out the different um, precautionary measures. You just want everybody to stick to it. Remember, washing of the hands is key. It's, that's called the, the, um, the, the international precaution. So, and apply all other measures that will keep, keep you all safe. And God bless you. And it's really a privilege. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. It's such an absolute pleasure to have you both here with us. Thank you. You yeah. are welcome. We highly appreciate it. Thank you, too. Thank you. Oh, We're you. inviting all persons who are listening. Please reach out to uh, the United Lifeline Deliverance Church of God. I hope I got it right. <laughs> Church of God. Yes. And, and share your support. Give your support. Um, because I know that as a developing country, I know Jamaica needs it. And if you've been imp impressed upon this evening as you listen to the show, I hope that uh, you'll act on it and provide support. Uh, personally, if you are interested in having um, a project for, on for entrepreneurs, I'd be happy to support. And um, you can speak with Marsha G on that if you if you want to. But it's something I'm passionate about, and would be happy to to work with you on um, getting support for that um, for thank absolute certainty. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you too. Thank you so much. Awesome night. <laughs> okay. Awesome. God bless you. God bless okay. you. Yeah. Yeah. Be very much interested in that. That in Trapinor. Thing. Yeah, and um, I mean that's the way forward. It is. And yeah. I awesome. must, I, yes, I must say also that we have in our church right now one family, uh, a young lady with uh, who uh, have polio, and and she has a daughter who also have a physical cha being physically challenged and mm -hmm. so on and their house were burnt down flat and they're trying to put a house a little home together so if there are anyone who um feels so led to assist in this we'll be very appreciative of it awesome you know, whatever help yes awesome thank you thank you so much yes. yeah it's a pleasure you're welcome, you. okay, you're welcome. <laughs> okay yes so uh, again, we see Back that. To your uh, show? Yes. Again, <laughs> I think guys. I your show. I'm sorry. Hey, listen. This is it's, 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 <laughs> this is a people show here. You know, I, I I remember we have a bit of guests some time ago. I think I think it was from Ireland. I think Ireland or one of those countries. Mm -hmm. And he called. He called. He, he, he you know he was just broken hearted, but he kept talking. And we, we let him do his thing. You know. Oh yeah. Um, it, no, yeah. it was um P. It's a P. P Poland. He was Poland. from Poland. Poland, it wasn't Ireland, but Poland, and yes, he was just yes. going on and on, and he was just so hurt. And, <laughs> and um, but sometimes, you know, when passion and when things, it, it just has to happen. We yes. know, on this show, we're not we're not so rigid, we're not so, you know, we we we're flexible here. It's about you and me. It's about us. Yeah. Um, yeah. and just really having the conversations, and as you can hear tonight, you see, there are folks who are really, you know, in in need. And mm -hmm. so we're now want to be an extension and an outlet to be yeah. a vehicle to to bring it really be, be information, uh, be it you know or resources, um, because as we as we plant those good seeds, it comes it comes back to us, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we, I'm, it's I'm really feeling it on me, like to really, really. I mean, anyway, it's it's not even something I I necessarily want to do, <laughs> but I feel like I'm gonna have to do. Like yes, I really I, I, want to I work, too. especially the younger people. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah you're right. And um, <laughs> just to kind of before I forget, just want to interject here. I'm so sorry. Is mm -hmm. that to get a, a bigger picture of what we do for the audience? You you want to get a, a um our app for those of you with Apple, oh, you can yeah. get it at the app UME store. Radio. Um, U M E Radio. That's the letter U M E Radio, one word. Um, for those who with the Android, you can go to your Play Store. And you can the um find UME Radio or UME Radio, and get an app, and we have just about everything on there that you can see what we're about and us and so forth. Um, you can also uh, email us at um UME info at UME Radio dot com. Thank you. Info at there you go. 
There you go. You said it. You said it well. <laughs> yes. Or just go to our website, umeradio.com, mm -hmm. or go to our uh, app, uh, UME Radio, mm -hmm. and you'll get all the information. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I think that um, how much time do we have here? We're done. Oh, we're done. Oh, <laughs> we just went I, one minute over the time. I, I thought we had. I thought we had five minutes, <laughs> but that's good. <laughs> so let's yeah. close out now. Um, well, again, thank you. Coach Raquel, you have been an awesome it's been a pleasure. guest tonight. You're feeling very well for Misty. I'm sure she's going to be happy and thankful for that. I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm and sure they missed her. I, I, well, I missed her tonight because yes. she always had these anecdotal um, yeah. references yes. that I would find so therapeutic, you know, huh? timely and very impactful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we, we, we pray that she should have a speedy recovery. And um, yeah. We'll be we'll be back next week at nine. The show will be aired tomorrow. Tomorrow, at, uh, tomorrow at is which day? Well. Tomorrow is Tuesday, and it's on Tuesday. Wednesday at nine. Yeah. Oh, Wednesday at nine, not Tuesday. Yes. Wednesday at nine. Wednesday midweek. You call it Hump Day, right? So we'll be on <laughs> on Wednesday at nine. And thank um, you, we will. And we thank you again for um, joining us tonight mm -hmm. uh, on Christian and Sex, and uh, look, looking forward to see you again. Awesome. So, Remember to wash your hands, stay safe, and God bless you. Awesome. Thanks, Lady Misty. We certainly will stay safe. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a lovely, lovely evening. Goodbye. Bye-bye.